<clears throat> I'm not quite sure why we have this much blue here today. Let's see if I open the blind and that fixes it. Well, I look a little, that's not gonna work. <laughs> Okay, the white balance is really messed up and I'm looking like one of the witches from Macbeth today, but we're gonna give it a go anyway. In his plays and poems, Shakespeare frequently used figures of speech that centered around birds of prey and the sport of falconry. Modern professional falconers have actually analyzed Shakespeare's words that he used in his plays and come to the conclusion that it was almost impossible for Shakespeare to get that kind of accuracy simply from reading about the sport. They are convinced he had to have visually seen what was going on. Now, the sport of hawking was extremely popular in Stratford-upon-Avon, where Shakespeare lived with his family. And so this week, we're asking the question, did Shakespeare practice falconry? As we learned in this week's episode of That Shakespeare Life, some of Shakespeare's references are so specific that historians and professional hawking experts are convinced that the bard had to have seen what was going on. But the question is whether he was observing the sport or was he practicing it himself? Now, as far as his actual references, Shakespeare talks about raptors, falcons, hawks, eagles, owls, and kites. They all appear in his metaphors and imagery that he uses in his plays. One particularly famous passage is in Macbeth, and it says, quote, all my pretty ones? Did you say all? Oh, hell, kite, all? What, all my pretty chickens and their dam? All one fell swoop? The use of hell kite here is an allusion to Macbeth himself, but these phrases are falconry phrases. And because Shakespeare used it here, the phrase one fell swoop went on to become a popular part of English colloquialisms. We use this phrase in this sense to mean deadly. Shakespeare talks about the buzzard in Richard III, and he talks about the hawk, osprey, falcon, kite owl, pelican, vulture, and I believe, did I say eagle already? Anyway, there's a whole list of birds of prey that he uses in everything from Richard III to the Henry plays to even Romeo and Juliet mentions the eagles. And I've made a complete list. Well, I didn't make a list, but I read about this in an article for this video. And I've linked to that article for you where you can see a diagram of Shakespeare's plays and all the birds of prey references that he uses and where that article is written by Michael Cummings. Thank you, Michael. And the link to that is in today's show notes. In ancient times, when the sport got its beginning, falconry was a way to put food on the table. It was just like archery or the way hunting is today. It started out of practical necessity. They needed to be able to catch rabbits and eat them, and the bird was really good at it, so they trained the bird to do it for them so they could eat. But it developed very rapidly into a popular sport, and for Shakespeare's time, it was popular among the nobility and the gentry. It was a very highbrow sport to participate in, and for practical reason, it was really expensive. The birds themselves had to have a special house where you would keep them, and you had to be able to afford to keep a professional professional falconer on staff to handle the birds for you. So just everyone wasn't able to participate in this. You had to have that much discretionary income. And when you look at the life of William Shakespeare, historians are divided as to whether or not William Shakespeare would have had enough money to afford investing in falconry on his own estate. Some people like to relegate William Shakespeare to kind of the middle class and suggest that, you know, he could afford nice things and he could provide for himself and his family, but he wasn't really rich. Whereas others point out that he had a sprawling estate in Stratford-upon-Avon by the second largest house in the entire town and held a lot of status and position and wealth, which meant that he could have afforded to spend money on a sport like falconry. So looking at him just financially, it's hard to tell whether or not William Shakespeare actually invested personally in owning the falcons or in participating in the sport himself. But what we do know is that the sport was hugely popular. Now, and it was also a rural sport, which ties it even more closely to William Shakespeare because towns like Stratford are where the sport would have been happening more than London. Eggs and chicks of these birds of prey were rare and expensive and often 
these birds and their eggs were given between dignitaries or between royals as gifts of very high status and symbol. It is said that both Henry VIII and Mary Queen of Scots had a passion for falconry. Mary Queen of Scots specifically delighted in flying the bird called Merlins. And I think that there is probably a connection there between that name and the King Arthur legend, but that's another video. Shakespeare used these references to falconry so much in his plays, and he was so accurate about it that a lot of historians believe Shakespeare himself was something of an amateur falconer. Now, obviously, there's a lot of evidence that would have to come forward to be able to prove that in any conclusive fashion, but I think Shakespeare's works themselves are so rife with the references and are so accurate beyond what you could get in a book that it certainly lends itself as evidence that Shakespeare was involved in this personally. So the answer to this week's question of did Shakespeare Shakespeare practice falconry is yes. I believe that Shakespeare probably was a falconer. So we're going to give this one a yes. Obviously, there's a lot more research and study you could do into this topic. So I've included a bunch of links to the articles I used as source material for this video and places that you can learn more about this topic in the show notes of today's video. That's it for this week here at Did Shakespeare. I'm Cassidy Cash, that Shakespeare girl, and I hope you learned something new about the Bard. One of the places we'll be seeing in 2019 when me and British History Tours partner together to offer the ultimate Shakespeare tour is we will be visiting Stratford-upon-Avon and you'll get to see the fields on Shakespeare's estate at New Place where if he flew falcons, he was most likely to have done that. And you can walk around his estate. We'll be visiting his birthplace as well as his home and gardens at New Place. You can walk with us in 2019 and early bird tickets for that trip go on sale September 28th. So to make sure that you are in line for that, please sign up for the email list. The early bird discount is only available to email subscribers. Tickets available on general release to the public will go out in October and they'll be available to everyone, but there's a massive $400, 300 pound discount um, called early bird tickets. And we are only giving that away to people that are on the email list. So if you think you might want to travel with us next year, look down below. There is a link to sign up. You'll want to click Shakespeare and make sure that you get on the right list, but you'll be the first to know about the early bird tickets when they go on sale September 28th. Until next time, I hope your week is a Shakespeare-filled week. Bye-bye.